Welcome back to the National Hurricane Center. This is Ken Graham. We're right here live in our operations area. Let's get the latest update on, on Hurricane Dorian. So let's let's start off with the, the radar. And, you know, look at this. It's just, if I draw a circle around the eye, you can see there's just not much movement, just wobbling around. And that's just a natural characteristic of, of these strong storms that do wobble. So just continuing to get those hurricane force winds. We've got the latest information in on, on some of the wind speeds. We're still maintaining 155 mile an hour winds. So battering 155 mile our winds, you still have all that rain that could be up to 30 inches in some places in the, in the Bahamas, and also the storm surge, you know, got those ties 18 to 23 foot above normal. So that's what we have. The other thing that we need to look at too, Dennis, is look at the rain band starting to impact portions of Florida. You're starting to see those come on shore and some reports of 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with time as well. So that right there, you're already starting to see some of those impacts. And the other part that I think is important, you know, just because you, you think you're pretty far from the storm. A lot of times we see some of these distant rain bands. Can you see them? They're all kind of striated like this. And what they do, you know, they look like they're moving fast, right? They look like they're really moving fast. But what happens is they're over the same areas. Notice they follow that line. They don't deviate from that line that much. That means some of the same areas can get repetitive rain training. That's what we call it. So as this system eventually starts pulling to the north, it's hard to predict exactly where some of these will line up, but there could be some um, heavy rains and some flooding you know, distance from, from the hurricane. Let's look at the latest track. Uh, right now, if you think about it, we got the latest information. No, no movements. We're still about 110 miles east of West Palm Beach, Florida. And a little expansion of the, of the winds. You know, that's just typical when it, you start to stall and you start to, to move again, we'll start seeing a small uh, expansion of some of these winds. This right here is the tropical storm force winds extending about, yeah, about 120, 130 miles away from the center. And the, the hurricane force winds, winds right around that center as well, uh, about 30, 30 miles or so. So you'll see some expansion of that with time. So what, what are the differences from before? Well, very similar forecast, but we have um, extended this, this hurricane warning from much of the Florida coastline. And there's also, this is new as well, there's a hurricane watch that actually goes up into Georgia. So that's some of the new things that we've had in the, the latest advisory. So where are we headed here? Let's look at the timing. So we have 11 o'clock a.m. now. So if you go into the future, this is 8 a.m. Tuesday, so tomorrow morning. And then we get into 8 p.m. Tuesday. So what's happening is it looks like tonight and tomorrow morning we'll start to see the pull to the north that we've all been anxiously awaiting because we really need to get this thing off of the Bahamas and moving northward. 8 a.m. Wednesday, 8 a.m. Thursday, 8 a.m. Friday, and off the chart here is uh, Saturday. So we're going to have a hurricane throughout the entire week, even going into next weekend. So that's a long time to have a hurricane. So if you think about this, let's go back to the cone. Let's look at some of the uncertainty. Um, that's, a, that's the forecast track. And notice we don't ever like to connect those dots. We don't put that on our map because that's not where we want to concentrate. We want to concentrate on this cone and the impact stretching well outside this cone. The center could be anywhere in this cone two-thirds of the time. So that's the official forecast, but a little bit of a, a, a wiggle, a wobble, a little change, you start seeing this get dangerously close to the coast and inland. So you got to prepare for hurricane force winds, and the M there means major hurricane, so category three or higher in that case. So independent of the category, independent of exactly where the track is, there will be impacts. We're already, already starting to see some of these at the current time. So let's look at some of those impacts. Um, this is the storm surge. So basically the water being uh, pushed into areas, and there's a couple things to, to think about here. I mean, this is just, this is, you know, Broward County here, um, getting a, a little bit, two to four feet, but then you look northward, anywhere in this area, um, going northward up into, you know, past Orlando, past, um, you know, Jacksonville, Orlando being inland, but you take it straight across the coast into Titusville and Melbourne, they can get four to seven feet of some of that storm surge. And, and the way we calculate this, this is independent of changes in the hurricane. In other words, we take every change that we can think of, bigger, smaller, faster, slower, left, right, stronger, um, and lower winds. We run all those different models, and then we come up with this forecast of four to seven feet because any of those changes in the characteristics, we don't want to be changing this all the time because we want people to make sure they're listening to those local officials. And I can't even describe how important that is. The local office, the weather forecast offices, Miami, Melbourne, Jacksonville, all the way up the coast, doing an amazing job briefing their emergency managers, trying to get the information to them. They're really feeding out the information. So let's listen. Let's really listen to those local officials. If you're in an evacuation zone and they're telling you to leave, please do so. And by the way, do it early. 
because here's something that's real important, Dennis, because that water could get there before the winds. So a lot of times what we see, especially with a, an expansive storm like this, that onshore flow is well away from the center. Just real quick going back. I don't normally go back a graphic, but we're going to try it. So if you think about rotation around the storm in, in that direction, you're going to get that on, onshore flow well away from the center. So if you're told to evacuate, please do, because sometimes, sometimes that water is going to get there before the winds. You lose your roads and you can't get out. So you got to get out early enough or you won't be able to. So we talk about how dangerous that is. If you have flooding out, even if you're in, in your house and you have flooding, um, you, you know, you can't get emergency rescue um, at that point. It's just hard to get out um, in, to you to get, do that rescue. So make sure you get out early. Please listen to those local officials. And, and Dennis, I'm going to get into the, the rainfall too. And, you know, yesterday we talked about, you know, most of the rain being offshore, and we see the heavier amounts offshore, but a small change in that forecast could bring some of those higher values in. Right now in that orange, 6 to 10 inches of rain right along the coast of Florida, and actually you can kind of see it coming up in the, the Carolinas as well. And just remember, I think it's a really important point, a little change in that forecast, and you start bringing the red values in there. That's 10 to 15 inches of rain and offshore 15 to 20. So highly dependent on the track. The Weather Prediction Center, what, what an amazing group up at College Park putting these together, but totally dependent on, on the actual track. So that's something we got to watch as well. Dan Brown's still over on, on the, uh, the hot seat over here. Wanted to see if you had any uh, observations, Dan, on the latest or watching the, the radar, you're looking at satellite. I mean, any observations over the last couple hours? The last thing I've seen here is, you know, uh, near the core of the storm, we don't have any observations currently, but uh, we are seeing some reports from the west end of Grand Bahama of winds that are staying, those are not so sustained, uh, close to 50 miles per hour gusts in the, in the 60s right now. Uh, certainly not surprising. They're getting closer and closer to the, uh, to the center as this uh, center edges ever so slightly toward the west. So everybody's been... The biggest question, of course, is, you know, we, we predicted this stall and, and devastating to the Bahamas. Everybody's talking about um, any signs that we can see when this thing starts to turn, turn northward. I think we got to wait, but I it, just want to get to the bottom. It's, it's kind of looking like it's going to be really another 12 to 24 hours of this slow motion across the northern Bahamas before we really start to see that more definitive uh, northwest or north return. One thing I know you're pointing out, Ken, and I would like to keep pointing out is that hurricane's not a point. These winds and uh, devastating surge extend far from the center. Uh, these show where some of those uh, tropical storm and the, and the red is the hurricane force. And again, they're going to expand. And any deviation of that track to the left is going to bring those winds on the Florida coast. And uh, hence, that's why we have those warnings out. Hey, Dan, thanks for being on the hot seat here. Doing a great job. Appreciate it. And we talked about the tropical analysis forecast branch. And, you know, you think about um, a hurricane like this, the, the big waves, the big seas, they extend so far away from the center. And what a, a dangerous situation for mariners. We have an amazing... Um, you know, we've got to keep the ships away from the big waves, right? You've got to keep them away from the hurricane force. It's, it's, just, it's just totally really interesting for people to see. Well, we're uh, getting to the peak of the season, and this satellite picture pretty much tells that story. This is uh, Africa, in the far eastern Atlantic here. There's the open Atlantic, the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, here's the U.S. And you can see these bright areas of color are uh, basically the things we're watching right now, and it's really lighting up. Uh, very, very busy pattern. Uh, we have an active tropical wave over western Africa uh, that we'll be watching down the road. We have something near the Cabo Verde Islands uh, that we think will, it has a high chance of becoming a tropical cyclone pretty soon. Uh, another system uh, just to the southeast of Bermuda that we're, we're keeping an eye on uh, has about a 30-40% chance maybe. This of course is Dorian sitting over Grand Bahama uh, in, the, in the Bahamas, about to make its way uh, up the, the east coast of Florida toward the Carolinas. And then into the Pacific we have Juliet off of uh, Mexico. And it's not just that these are tropical cyclones, but e even the smaller things are, are potential hazards to mariners. We could see very high seas, even with this little one that is just uh, to the southeast of Bermuda. So uh, that keeps us busy. Uh, tropical cyclones are, of course, uh, the biggest issue, but there's, there's many other things that we're dealing with, too, in the Marine community.
There we go. Um, you're in it right there. So keeping uh, everybody safe, not just on, on the land, but also over, over the oceans. And just what an important duty that they have here at the Tropical Analysis Forecast Branch. We call them TAFB here internally. They do a great job um, keeping everybody safe. So again, um, you know, less, we're going to watch the track, but uh, you know, independent of that track, they're going to see some impacts. Keep tuned. Listen to those local officials, and we'll keep you updated um, every step of the way. This has been Ken Graham right here live at the National Hurricane Center.